thằng <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Melissa Manchester and they've asked me to uh, to ask you a few questions. Ah, okay. <laughs> good evening, good evening. Introduce hi. yourself. Yes, um, hi, I am Andrew Day, uh, singer-songwriter. No, I'm Andrew Day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Adrian Gerbis. <laughs> Um, Adrian and I, uh, along with another woman named Lauren Christie, did the the, um, the song "Light That Never Fails" for the ending credits of Meru. It was our esteemed pleasure. It's a fantastic song. Do you yeah, agree? Yeah. And a magnificent performance. Thank you. <laughs> so, as a as a singer songwriter myself, who has um, besides a performing career, I've written for films and for theater as well. So. The first question I, I want to ask you both is, um, tell me, tell me the, uh, I mean, this is such an inspiring documentary, of course, but tell me the difference for you between writing for an assignment mm -hmm. as opposed to writing a song because you're finished stalling writing a song. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what it, what it means, what, it, what does it do in terms of the inspiration which is provided for you? Um, I think for me, what it is, you know, and, and it's, it's, I initially, I'll say it's, it's hard to call it an assignment, you know, because uh, for Adrian and I particularly, it's, it was something that, you know, we heard about and we were inspired by. So I think anything that we work on, we kind of have to be inspired by it. But um, uh, I think for me, it's just about, you know, when we are working together, we're conveying our vision and our experiences and putting our expertise into it. And. And, and we're bearing our soul, but when you're writing for something like this, something that people are so passionate about, you're actually bearing their soul, you know, in conjunction with your own, obviously, because you're the channel that's coming through. But I think it's it's important to to really connect with what it is you're working on and to be very aware that, that it's, it is someone else's story that you're telling and that, you know, causing, helping to sort of, bolster the emotion, you know, with, with regard to, to the film. And the phrase, the light that never fails, was that the first idea that came to you, or did that come out of the discussion after watching this? No, it wasn't, it wasn't the first thing. First of all, Just we... checking. Yeah. We, <laughs> the first thing, we had a, diff a different chorus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I loved the first chorus, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, but... You know, we, we stretched a bit further, and I brought in a very good friend of mine, songwriter, Lauren Christie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we'd already done the verses and the, the track. Mm -hmm. She came in and um, wrote a different chorus. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we were, you know, we were too into the film. Yeah. We were very I into so. the film. You're right, yeah. <laughs> what, what was the first, what was the content of the first chorus? Just, just give me the idea. You don't. Have to say. It was, the, it was the more about being on the cold mountain. Yeah, it, it, that those words were actually in it, cold yes. mountain. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think, which I completely understood. Yes. That uh, Chai and Jimmy had told us, it was a little too on the nose, and yes. we were like, oh yeah, duh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, but yeah. Uh, they wanted it to be a very universal theme. Absolutely. You know, that was. <clears throat> that phrase is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I knew that Lauren was very religious now. Oh. She found God a while ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds a little strange, but she did. Oh, no. No, no. You know, this would she's, be that movie. And Andrew, yes, of course, yes. is, you know, with God every single day and has been always. So I thought Lauren would connect. And she did, yeah. And she came in and she just had the light that never fails, meaning... Oh, absolutely. The, the big light. It's the microcosm mm -hmm. and the macrocosm. That's and what's it's beautiful. successful yeah. about the, that's that's the way it, it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was, it was just done. I mean, she wrote it at home, came over, gave mm -hmm. us the lyric. Andrew yeah. walked into the room and sang it. Yeah. I mean, we did tweak a few things here and there in the chorus in yeah. the studio, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it was like, as soon as we heard it, we were like, yeah. oh yeah, exactly. this is exactly it, you know? And yeah. I bring those questions up because years ago I had the honor of um, of uh, befriending and, and being gifted by the friendship of Marvin Hamlish. 
and when he wrote the way we were, what we know as the way we were, that was the second try. Uh. <laughs> the first try sounded nothing like it. It's an excellent song too, mm -hmm. but it didn't capture right. what you're talking about. You know that 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 shift of focus, and then you find out that that's the focus. It's yeah. not the right on with the mountains and right. the freezing right. frostbite. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think it, it's interesting. I love to hear about the process of that. Yeah, and it, it, it's that's the thing that I think that we've in our relationship working together, mm -hmm. kind of growing toward. What not what's beautiful, but what clicks. That's you know, exactly. there's something that will speak to you and say, "I'm right," and that's. And did that affect it. your singing? I mean, once you sang, oh, did you say, "Okay, this is the one"? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because there's such power in your voice. It was, it was so gorgeous. Yeah, well, you yeah, absolutely. When she walked in and started singing, it was just like, "Oh my god!" Right, <laughs> right. And what is the thing that has surprised you most about your artist's walk? Um. Oh, the thing that surprised me most about it is uh, exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, that is, yeah, a little bit of that. Sure. <laughs> um, uh, is it more than you thought it would be? Is it less than you thought it would be? Is it more dangerous than you thought it would be? You know what? It's it's it is much more than I thought it would be. Honestly, I, I think every day that we go through this journey. Every time an opportunity comes in, you know, something like this to write a song or to perform on a TV show or to, you know, it just, I don't know, it reminds me that you, you do have to put in the work. But for me, I definitely believe that, yes, there, that God does watch over me and does guide me and, and, you know, take me these different places. So, you know, it's about working and persevering, but also about surrendering a little bit as well, it's too. It's about surrendering. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good on you for getting that so early oh. in your career. <laughs> that's frequently something that shows up after major catastrophes. Oh. <laughs> One's own mountains in the mind. My, my catastrophes just weren't in the camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and are you going to be singing this on the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Uh, no, no, not this. No, not this one. But, yeah, I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So are you performing this song now in your performances, in your, uh, in your concerts? Not as much right now, but we're at, we had just finished a tour that we had already planned the lineup for. Mm -hmm. But we want to incorporate it because people are like, I want to hear oh, it. Yes. I want the response has been really amazing, so we are yes. incorporating it into the show. What are some of the responses to the songs, uh, to that song? You know, I, I've, I've gotten, you know, first of all, I want the song and I want to hear you perform it. <laughs> Usually very aggressive. Um, but, you know, some of the other responses are just, you know, people saying how, just generally how inspiring it is, how encouraging it is, and, and um, you know, that the message speaks to them in a variety of different ways, you know, everybody has their quote-unquote mountain, literal, for them, <laughs> and, um, you know, encouraging people to, to overcome those obstacles, I mean, that's the purpose of the song, you know, and so seeing it affect people in that way is really, it's, it's, it's cool. It's very <laughs> powerful. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've been doing what I do for about 45 years now, and, and what, I, um, what I find more touching as I, as I keep, uh, keep at this career of mine is that the actual song form has such value. Mm -hmm. um, I call it soul currency. Oh, oh. Because it, it's this small world that simply didn't exists before you created it. Oh wow. And and once you create it, it um, it it shifts minds and moves hearts and sometimes galvanizes nations and mm -hmm. saves lives. So to have created such a powerful message that will um, that will reach out to people and talk about the light that you reignited, that, that they forgot, trust me, mm -hmm. I'm telling you the future of the song. Aww. You know, it's very, <laughs> very powerful, but, but it's, um, I have seen that over and over again in my life, and, and you know, people don't, um, in this world, songs are perceived as things that are indispensable, yeah, and right. my presumption is you listen to a song once and you let it go. It's just the way we are, but when you have a song so powerful where it it grabs a very large image mm -hmm. and synthesizes it in such a fantastic, I mean, it's like an aria, it's mm -hmm. magnificent. I think um, I think you're going to touch really a lot of people very oh. quickly. I really do. I think you're going to have a lot of people very grateful that you wrote this. Oh, song. thank you. Honestly, I really do. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, 
Did you always feel heard when you were writing this, when you went in to record this? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, was, I mean, there was no conflict? No, no, not at all. I mean, you Just know, I, I was, yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like I'm very fortunate to be able to say that because mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a valid question, you know. You do, you kind of get trampled over. No, we want this. We don't want to hear, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but, we, you know, I had the pleasure of actually meeting Jimmy and Chai before, you know, we did this. Wow. And so we, we sat down and we had dinner and they're amazing, amazing, amazing people. And so to really pick their brain, because to be honest, before I saw this film and before I met them, of course, I, I was probably like most people who are, you know, ignorant to, to you know, alpinists. And I didn't know much about it and I didn't understand the drive until I realized, oh, it's the same drive that I have that tells me every day, you have to do this song. You have yes. to go to this session. You have to go to this place that intimidates you and scares you. So I, I was able to meet them and, and really understand where they were coming from. And at the same time, I think for us, they were very accommodating to us as well, too. You know, they weren't pushy about what they wanted. They they knew what they wanted, but they were still very much like, we still want it to be you, you know? So we, I mean... I would venture to say we were very fortunate in this process. And what was their instant reaction to the song? What was their initial reaction? Well, they, they just knew it was right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they knew it was right. Yeah. Oh, my God. It, it, it was amazing. I think their response was, what did they say, Adrian? We did it again. <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. For me, it was like, oh. Right, I'm sure, yeah, of course, oh, yeah. of course. Because I think even when we sent over the other one, Cold Mountain, you know, the response, they're, they're just very nice mm -hmm. and polite people, you know, so it wasn't like, this isn't it, it's terrible. <laughs> right. Yeah, they were like, you know, it's beautiful, but it's a little too on the nose. Their directions were actually very, very They clear. said it was too on the nose? Yeah, they were like, Cold Mountain's just a little too on the nose. It's okay, you know, more universal. And, and we went through different chorus ideas, and that's when Adrian brought in Lauren, who we were just like, yeah, she's perfect. Uh, yeah, because I think that once you've had a go at it, mm -hmm. right, it's very hard to reinvent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and start second guessing. Mm -hmm. She came in and didn't have any other view of other than yeah, the fresh perspective. When she heard Andrew sing the verses and the, and the record, for her it was like a fresh yeah. moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she just, you know, being that she is the most one of the most wonderful writers, I think mm -hmm. it was it was just done. Yeah, that was done. amazing. It's amazing when you think of um, writing being about rewriting so much of the time. It's amazing when you bring in somebody new who is seeing whose interior camera mm -hmm. is is moving towards the corner of the picture that you didn't realize was right. there, and then that light that shines in the corner of that interior camera in your heart and soul—that's the light. That's the perfect way to that's describe it. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. One more question. Since I know Stevie Wonder had uh -huh. a, a, a moment in the beginning of your life, I had the honor of, uh, and privilege of working with Stevie on my most recent 20th album. And um, he's been a uh, really a sweet and precious uh, person. Mm -hmm. What was he like for you? Well, you know, in the beginning, we didn't actually, and that was the misconception. Was, it was that his he, wife, wasn't it? It, it was. It was. It was his wife and um, Adrian who spoke. And then she, well, before Adrian, uh -huh. I had met. I was on the phone with Stevie and his wife, and they heard me singing like in front of like this strip mall. It was like a clip of me singing, and so we reached out and called. You know, and I mean, it didn't work out at at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a situation that all artists go through—the yeah. horror story. But um, but fortunately, they held on to my information, and I believe you you saw her in a, a pizza, right? You guys were getting pizza, and she played for Adrian a clip of me singing. Who just like it was a miracle night. I took Aww. my kids out <laughs> to get pizza at uh, the Commons in Calabasas. Yeah, yeah, you guys are getting the detailed story. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't thinking that I was going to bump or find a legend. At that moment, yeah. just, I was just going to get like a marinara, you know, pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <She's got laughs> <a pizza> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> Stevie's wife, um, Kai, was, I could see her coming towards me. She was also hunting a pizza, but the pizza place had shut, and I had two. So I said, Well, look, I have one of these. And the boys would just, you know, munch on one of them. <clears throat> and I, I actually said to her that Stevie had actually mentioned 
to me that he had a, a you know, he, he found a great girl. It's crazy for me to hear that. Right? Yeah. Like, it's still weird. <laughs> I'm like, what? So, you know, being that Adrian's very industrious, uh, <laughs> I said, oh, can I have a listen? And it just so happened she had her on the phone a, a clipping of what she did. <clears throat> it's 11 o'clock at night and I have that. I have my own story about that. In the, pit, in the pit, oh, pitch God. darkness with the kids and Elaine, my wife, and I heard it, and I just, the minute I heard her voice, I just said, oh my God. And how long ago was that? It was about four years, three and a half years ago. Yeah, four years ago. I immediately rushed home and thought, how do I find this girl? And I, I found a little video clipping, and again, when I saw the video clipping, and I watched her sing, I called Elaine into the studio and I said, this is the greatest girl singer I, I think I've heard in, 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 in 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I've worked with CC Wyland, mm -hmm. <coughs> Whitney, and all, all of those people, mm -hmm. and I heard her voice, and I, I, never, heard, I never heard a voice like mm -hmm. it. Wow, so from now, no. from, I like to under promise and over deliver. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I was totally convinced, and I was I was a madman from that moment. Mm -hmm. Like it took nine months <laughs> to get her, you know. And I was I was going out of my mind. I was walking up the back garden saying, "She's Billy Holiday. She's one of the greatest singers of all time." I, I, I gotta I gotta I gotta get this girl to make a record. Well, you know, nine really? months. Things get worth. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell the last bit. Um, so yeah, that that uh, so they had that exchange, and then um, fortunately she put me in contact. Kai actually reached out to me, and I just thought, gosh, you know, I had come through like a terrible situation, you know, and and it was like, or you know, coming through dealing with it, and and uh, you know, she still had my information, and I was just like, wow, just by grace, you just had that. It's amazing, you know, and. So she reached out and she's like, you know, are you, are you still working with that person? And you said, no, not anymore, you know. She said, I want to introduce you to someone, you know. Well, her and Steve wanted to introduce me to someone, you know. She told me Adrian Gerber. She said, okay. So I go do some research, you know, whatever. And um, so they ended up sending a limousine down to San Diego uh, <laughs> to, to pick me up and to, to, to take me to Mr. Chow. I mean, a taxi would have been fine. But I was like, all right, we'll roll around in a limo for two hours. <laughs> But um, so we sat there, and it was myself, uh, Stevie, Kai, and Adrian, and Elaine, and we had dinner at Mr. Charles. And I just remember being like, I just couldn't believe it was happening. My jaw was dropped, you know. And um, and the nine months he's talking about is actually after we had that meeting and we had talked. You know, it was for me there was a lot of emotional and spiritual things that I was dealing with, and like I said, having come out of that situation, I just I needed a minute. You know, it was. For me, it was a moment of saying, okay, God, is this where you really want me? You know? It was a long minute. It was, it was a nine-month <laughs> minute. <laughs> and so, you know, so I remember yeah, it was almost a year later, and, and uh, you know, I, I had to back away. I had, to, And, I'm, you know, people thought, you're, you're crazy, you know, it's, but I, I had to back away. And and uh, so, you know, almost a year later, like I said, it, getting myself together, I, I always tell the story. I said, I remember thinking about Adrian one day. And I was like, oh, I wonder if things would have worked out with him, you know, how, how that would have worked out. And, you know, and um, and then I remember after that, I just, you know, shot up a prayer. I said, okay, well, you know, if you still want me to do music, show me, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I get a text out of the blue from him. Mm -hmm. I don't know if my number was the same, Adrian. How did you get it? <laughs> but, um, and he, he's in typical Adrian fashion. No, hello. No, hi, this is Adrian Gervitz. Just a cold-blooded, are you signed yet? I still want to work with you. I'm like, who is this? <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, it's Adrian. I was like, oh my gosh. So I went up, I took the meeting with him, and we ended up just getting in the studio, and, and it just, the rest is history. It worked well, out. but you know, the fact that you took time before you said yes, that really speaks to your higher self and your deeper wisdom. Oh, thank you. Because a lot of times you, because we say in the beginning of a career, you just, <laughs> Please yeah. like me. And, yeah, and, and, honestly, like, you know, and I was no different being young and, and, yeah. and broad eyed and bushy tailed. And I and now it's funny because I mean, I'm 30 now, you know, and mm -hmm. I thought people are always like, well, you know, I would hear like record producers, you know, 
well, you're over the hill at 24, and I'm like, oh, well, you know. It's a new but, day, baby. <laughs> right, it is. And it so is. now I'm like, God, I couldn't imagine this happening to me at 19, 20, right. 20. You know, I, mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for the time. Yeah, but it's life. better. It's so much, it's so much, it speaks so, so many volumes about your character mm -hmm. that you took the time before you took the plunge mm -hmm. as opposed to taking the plunge and saying, oh, my God, I wish I had right. taken it. Right, right. <laughs> so that has to do with it. says a lot about my character, too. <laughs> Your character, I, I, wanted, I just I want you now. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions for these two talented people? We're pretty thorough, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to know uh, what made you guys write something completely different for this film rather than use one of the crazy songs on your record because they're all great. Like I was looking at this film and hearing like rise up in my head over mm -hmm. and over. And then when the song came on, I was like, this is amazing. What made you guys choose to write something brand new rather than use something that you had mm -hmm. in your repertoire? Mm -hmm. um. <clears throat> well, I think the film deserved having something special written for it. Gotcha. And when I looked at the film, I was asked to come up with the music and the idea. It, it touched me. I mean, you know... <clears throat> Not that I've ever been climbing, uh, but um, other than a bit of sand when I was a little boy. <laughs> but it did, you know, I could feel immediately, I'm very like that, you know, I can put myself into these places and the coldness and the whole feel of it, Just it just gave me that feeling and I very quickly did the track. So I think the difference between when we write like music or Andrew's record that that is more of an artist thing, and this is us lending ourselves to the movie for a moment, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and, and trying to give the, the movie what it deserved, which is a an original song. Mm -hmm. Right, and that, that was speaking to the first question I was asking: the difference between writing for yourself yeah. or writing for well, assignment is, is right. a <laughs> right. clumsy no, word, yes. but no, no. but but you know, you're you when you're writing for film or when you're writing for theater your song is suddenly in the world of purpose yeah. and so you're writing to the images and writing to the heart and the soul of the piece and so in that song you know that little world that didn't exist before you wrote it you wrote it mm -hmm. you know suddenly you have four minutes that's capturing a world that simply didn't exist except in the in, in the world of the image but now it exists in the world of song and it's so inspiring mm -hmm. to write for things that inspire you it's just your brain just does just opens you know, it has to. Yeah, yeah it's it like does. the mountain. Mm -hmm. You have to climb it's it's out. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. Yes. Yes. But, but what's what's different to me is that the song that you wrote was really the essence of the of the movie mm -hmm. of right. the documentary. Mm -hmm. It was a song about passion. Could have been on the mountain. Mm -hmm. Could have been digging a ditch. Mm -hmm. Could have been having a singing career. Mm -hmm. It's a song about passion, an anthemic mm -hmm. ballad, you know, forever. Yeah. Forever. I agree, and it's it's like like you said, you know, a song. It could be about climbing a mountain. It could be about having a music career, and that was actually something that Jimmy Chai and I talked about when we had dinner because I I just flat out asked him why, you know, why, and so, and that's when we were really able to liken it to a music career. Like, how many times, Adrian, have you been told you're crazy for trying to do this project? You won't make any money, you'll fail, you know, you, you'll you have to get your life together, you'll have to, but you can't not do it, you know? I, I feel like it's, you know, I, I do believe that we were all kind of, we have this lane of excellence that we were created for, and if we really pursue our purpose, then we will always surpass our own expectations and everyone else's but it requires risk tons of risk it requires sacrifice and so you know it just I, I understood after talking to them that it was no different than me pursuing music you know right however just as a tiny addendum to that and to your question mm -hmm. there's probably a very good chance that the song would not have been written except for this documentary right that's right absolutely mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah. yes it shows up yeah. it's supposed to show yeah. Thank you all. Yeah, this has been you. fantastic. <laughs> yes, oh, we have another yes. question. Uh, love your voice, love the song. Uh, thank you. How did the project fall in your lap? How did it come to you? It came to Adrian first and um, the documentary floating, or they sought you out? Or? 
They did. Actually, originally they heard, um, it came through our manager, partner, friend, Jeffrey Evans, and, and um, originally they heard a song that I did called Rise Up that they loved and that they wanted to use for the film. And um, it was a song that was being used on my album, and so it was, it was, it worked for the film, but again, at the same time, like Adrian said, the film deserved something that was very specific, you know? So it was like, okay, well, why don't you guys take a crack at writing something new for it? And that's when it came into play when we were like, yeah, we can really craft something that is for this movie. You know what I mean? That's for, that speaks to exactly what they're talking about in the movie. You know, like, I, I feel like Rise Up wasn't quite it didn't quite embody the movie the way this song came about, you know. And will this song then be uh, able to be nominated for an Academy Award? He said yes. <laughs> quite late, he said yes. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> it's got Check. my vote. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Question in the back? Well, they call me the mad scientist. Uh -huh. um, there wasn't a we band. Go. There wasn't a band. <laughs> um, it was, um, you know, I have a studio and I write in my studio, sit down with my piano, and, and then I try and, you know, produce a track. So there wasn't players as such. And uh, this particular song was just programmed by me with different strings and, you know, I work it for days and days and days and days and days and hours and hours until I get the track feeling the, the way that I felt it was. And then Andrew came and heard the track and normally she'd go, oh, no, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> or she'd say, oh, I love it, you know, and uh, most times she loves it. Um, and she came in and started to sing her ideas of verses and sat and wrote and that's really how it came around mm -hmm. lauren never saw the film yeah, but, what she, saw it, yeah. but what she did get is that she got the track and the feeling of andra on the verses and it totally inspired her to write the chorus mm -hmm. so that's how the whole thing you know ended up mm -hmm. coming together yeah okay you're only allowed one <laughs> 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 Are you in the music business, by the way? <laughs> I'm always very, very technical. I'm always very, very fair with things like that. It was '97 for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got one for Jeffrey and one for Andrew and and Lauren. <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, I'm accustomed to that, but, no, it's, it's, it's three ways. ways. Yeah, it's just equal yeah, It's just equal split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It makes for a happy life. Yeah. Yeah, it I makes for a happy life, yeah. 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 I agree. It does, yeah, absolutely. Even if I, even if I wrote a tiny little part of a song, you mm -hmm. know, it's, you, you just, you split it between you. Yeah, That's I feel like our process was, even making the album, our process was just like wholly collaborative. So it's kind of like, I can't, you know, Adrian would have an idea, like for instance on the song Not Today. So I have this idea, Not Today. It's like, okay, cool. So I'll start to build, you know, the lyrics around that. He'll play, you know, the music. And, you know, I will have an idea, oh, I think the chords should go here or the drums should sound like this. And so I feel like it's all that back. And, there's no way to try to chisel out. And, you know, and it's like when you're working with family, it just, and that's what we are is, I don't know, to sit there and try to, well, I need to figure out the minute. It's, it's you know. Yeah, it, how many lines do I show yeah, up with? I feel like we both invested our whole selves into this project. And, to, you know, to say, well, I did more, I did. No, we, we, we gave up our lives for mm -hmm. 
in almost a year to, to After dedicate 55 to this. years of making music, I'm not into it for the money. <laughs> it's it's, it's a, bit, a bit late for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's total art and the love of doing it. Yeah. I'm writing a great song. I'm writing any song. Mm -hmm. It's just a gift. Yeah. Well, thank you all. I'm glad you had a pleasant evening. What? 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 Somebody else? Oh, and before we go, <laughs> no, I was just closing up this Q&A part. Before we go, Miss Day has uh, agreed to sing this gorgeous song live for you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing the background part. You're not going to do the background, Angel. <laughs>